Amen. And Peter, he stepped out. He stepped out over his head. But they're still under his feet. Isn't that something? Our problems, well, sometimes we think are big. And, and, and I understand. They are problems, but when we get our eyes on the problems and not on the problem solver, our problems get much bigger. But if we get our eyes on the problem solver, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, and off of our problems, our problems will get smaller and he'll get bigger. Yeah. It's amazing how sometimes our perspective can change on the way we look at things, isn't it? Yeah. And I'm thankful again for the good songs that's been sung. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking as we were singing about uh, the anchor holds, little Tom. I guarantee you, I can set an anchor sometimes in a storm and it don't hold very good. But his anchor, his anchor a hold. No matter how strong the wind may come, no matter what may come our way, his anchor is sure. The Bible, Hebrews says it's sure and steadfast. That means it's not going to give, it's not going to break, it's going to hold. And no, no matter how high the waves may get, but I want you to take your Bible and turn to the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter number 1. And here we are. Can you believe it? A brand new year. I'm glad you're sitting down. Christmas is only a month away. And we'll be in another brand new year. That's how fast it seems it's going, isn't it? And entering into a brand new year, we, we're, we're entering in. To the unknown, really, we don't know what this year is going to hold. Uh, we hope promises and, and we hope that there's going to be uh, good things that happens, but we just don't know. And we see here, we don't know the potential this year may have for you and I. It holds potential for, every, for, it, for each and every one of us, those that are obedient to the word of God. It holds potential. And uh, let me ask you a question. How many of us was disappointed at all last year? Or maybe even yesterday? You see, we don't need to take our disappointments into this year. Amen. They're behind us. We've got this brand new year ahead of us. And here in the book of Joshua, Joshua was getting ready. He was, he was taking charge, so to speak. Moses is dead. Now, they've been wandering around for 400 and some 70 some odd years now. They were in bondage in Egypt for, 400, for 430 years. Slaves under the pharaohs. Moses brought them out, led them. Of course, they wouldn't go into the promised land. They sinned. God said, 40 years. So now, 470 years has passed. Moses couldn't go in because he sinned. He smote the rock rather than speaking to the rock. Which, he said, you're not, you'll not see. He said, I'll take you up to the mountain. You can look into the promised land, but you won't go into it. But here we find Joshua getting ready to go into a place that he's never been before. Nobody in the children of Israel has ever been that way before. And here we find the very first verses, and after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses, Moses' minister, saying, he said, my Moses, my servant is dead. So what's he telling Joshua here? He said, Joshua, you're not to look back. You're the one. He said, Joshua, you need to keep moving forward. Joshua, here, here's, what, here's what we're going to do. He said, Joshua, my servant is dead. He said, now therefore arise. He said, and go over. So now he said, Joshua, uh, you've got to have some forward momentum here. There needs to be some forward steps here. You need to uh, keep pressing forward. He said, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give them. Even to the children of Israel. <clears throat> now I want you to notice what he says here in verse number three. He said, every place. 
And here's a promise that God has given to uh, uh, Joshua and to the children of Israel. And he says that every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, he said, that have I given unto you as I said unto Moses. So what's he saying? Joshua, here you're starting in a place that you've never been before. Joshua, you've, you've not gone there before. You don't know really where you're going. He said, but I've already prepared the way. Can I say he's already prepared the way in 2023 for you and me? He's already got the plans laid out. He's already, he's already prepared the way for you and I as his children. And he says, from the wilderness, now he, he gives them the land here that God has given to him. He said, from the wilderness, he said, and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the, the river Euphrates. He said, and all the land of the Hittites and he said, and to, to the great sea, or Mediterranean, he said, the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. Now here's another promise, and there shall not be any man be able to stand before thee. He said, all the days of thy life. Now that's a promise, isn't it? And, and God has given you and I, he said, I will, he said, therefore shall not any Man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as I was with Moses. Now here's the same promise. He, he's given you the same promise too. He said, so shall I be with thee. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And that's the same promise. Now uh, he, he's telling Joshua, he said, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm not going to leave you comfortless, in other words. <coughs> he said, I will not fail thee. I know a lot of times you and I will fail God. I fail God. You'll fail God. But God will not fail you and I. Amen. He will not. He said, I will not, for, I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. And then he says, be strong and have a good courage for unto this people thou shalt divide an inheritance. He said, the land which I swear unto the fathers to give them. He said, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. Now, when he's talking about all the law, he's talking about the word of God. He's talking about God's word here. And again, from Genesis to Revelation, he's talking about his word. He said all the law. God's word is the law, by the way. He said, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn. Now, here he, he, he puts a condition there's conditions that God places upon you and I. Now, aren't you glad tonight his love is unconditional? He loves you no matter what. He loves you unconditionally. But some of his blessings are conditional. It does require obedience on our behalf. There are some things that we need to do. Brother Ray was preaching the other night and he's talking about Relationships and fellowship. We can have relationships without fellowship. Families can be torn apart. They're still families. Fathers and sons and mothers and daughters, they're, they're, they're still family, but they can have no fellowship. But you can't have fellowship without a relationship. You can't have you can have relationships without fellowship, but you cannot have fellowship without a relationship. Even as a church, as a church body, we cannot fellowship without a relationship, being brothers and sisters in Christ. <laughs> Aren't you glad that God's not like we are? Hallelujah. Then he says, which Moses thy servant commanded thee, he said, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. He said that thou mayest prosper. Now I want you to notice where he said, that thou mayest prosper wheresoever thou goest. So he's saying here in 2023, as we move forward, as we go through this year, God said, hey, if you'll stay true to my word, 
true to what I say. He said, I'm going to bless you. I'll bless you. He said, wherever. He said, wheresoever thou goest. This whole, folks, we've got 364 more days ahead of us. That's a lot of opportunities, isn't it? That's a lot of opportunities. He said, in this book of the law, again, God's word shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. And thou shalt miss observe to do according to all that is written therein. And again, another word. His word. You know, God's given us his word. I, I can remember being a young man. Young me and Lisa first got married, and uh, uh, we we wouldn't we wouldn't where we should be. We wouldn't where we were supposed to be. And I said, Well, I, I wish I had a book that would tell me how to do this and do that. And I had it the whole time, but I just never looked at it. It's called the Word of God. It, it, it was not God's fault. It was his fault. It was my fault. Because I, I never bothered to pick it up. Shame on me. And he says, To do according to all that is written therein for then. Now again, here's a condition. For then. Thou shalt make thy way prosperous. In other words, you, 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 you fill your heart and your mind with the Word of God. He said, you start obeying the word of God. He said, things are going to make, start out working a little better out. It will work better for you. He says, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then, again another condition, then thou shalt have a good success. Now, is anybody here not wanting to be successful this year? Does anybody here not want to be uh, better this year than you were last year? Does anybody here want to be worse this year than you was last year? I, I, that's crazy. That's, that's just a foolish question, buddy. No, we all want to be better. We all want to move forward. We all, hey, hey folks, we just need, we need a closer walk with him. No, I like that song too, don't you? Just a closer walk with thee. So we see here as Joshua was, was getting ready, he, he was, God was preparing, not only was God preparing Joshua for this, uh, his mission here for what he was to do, but God was already preparing his way that Joshua could do exactly what God told him to do. You know what God's doing? God's preparing 2023 for you and I to be able to do what God has prepared us to do. He, folks, he's got something for us to do this year. He's getting ready to lead the children. Moses is dead. Joshua, there's no sense of looking for Moses. Moses is gone. Your help is gone. Folks, sometimes we've got to uh, take, the, take the reins. We've got to take the bull by the horns, so to speak, it's ourselves sometimes. Sometimes we've got to put our hands to the plow and plow ourselves sometimes. <laughs> He, he said this, you know, sometimes I'll let my faults, and I've got plenty of them, and my failures really get me down and discouraged. And I'll let them, and I'll drag them, and, and it's just like a great big, we, we used to call it in the military, we were doing the duffel bag drag. Everything you own, you got in that duffel bag, and here you are, you're dragging it along. And that's what I'm doing with my faults and my failures from last year. But the best thing I can do with that is do it like the, like the, air, like the airliners are doing. Right. You can lose your luggage. I need to get that luggage lost. Brother Scott, I think I was the only one who went to Israel with y'all that year and had a duffel bag. <laughs> oh, and still had my social security number on it like an army. Beat all I ever seen. I wouldn't do that today. But Joshua, he said, Joshua... You need to go ahead, Joshua, prepare yourself. Get ready. Joshua, I want you to go forward. I want you to move. Take this people. Take all these that are behind you. Joshua, you're the leader now. And here's what you need to do. You need to take these people and go ahead and get ready to move across this Jordan River. Here's what Paul said in Philippians chapter number 3, verses 13 and 14. He said, Brethren, he said, I count not myself to have apprehended, 
but this one thing I do. Folks, we need to do the same thing. This one thing I do. I, he said, forgetting those things which are behind. He said, those things which are behind you and I. He said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth. Folks, we need to be here at, not only as individuals, as, as, as members here at Revival Baptist Church, as a, as a corporate, we need to be moving forward. He says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, he says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So he's telling Joshua, here's Joshua, you need to get the people prepared, you need to get prepared, and here's, you need to go ahead and start moving. I, he said, I've already got your way prepared, I've already promised you the land. He said, it's there, Moses, uh, there, Joshua. Can I ask you a question tonight? How many of you, how many of you drove to church? How many of you drove to church looking in the rearview mirror? There's a reason why it's a whole lot smaller than your windshield. You, what do you use your windshield for? You're looking forward to where you're going, aren't you? You've got to be able to say, aren't you glad your rear view mirror is not as big as your windshield? You wouldn't be able to see other than what's behind you. What do we use that rear view mirror for? It's just a glance up to take a quick glance at what you just passed or what's maybe coming up from behind. It's not to stare into. It's not to use hey, for, as, a, as a guide to drive. No, that windshield, that looking forward, that's exactly what we're to use. That's why it's so much bigger than the rear view mirror. So we can see. And God's got a plan. Just as he had a plan for here for Joshua and the children of Israel to move forward, to take possession of what God has already promised them. You know what we need to do this year? We as revival and as individuals we need to take possession of what God has promised us. We need to let we need to quit letting the devil rob us of our joy. He says this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind. He, say, he said Joshua he, here, here's the promise. He said, now don't you notice here, he's verse number five, I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And he said, Joshua, in verse six, be as strong. He said, be strong and of good courage. He said, for I've given you the land. He said, I've given you the land to divide for an inheritance for these people. You remember later on, what did Caleb say? Give me this mouth. And here it's been 470 years since anybody in Israel has been in this land. Other than those that maybe was left during the Babylonian captivity. Now, most of Israel has not been there. They're coming home. They're heading home. And Joshua, he said, hey, Joshua, here, here's what you need to do. He said, be strong and of good courage. Then he said, verse number 7, he said, Only be thou strong. You know what the Lord wants you and I to do to be? Uh, he wants us to be strong and have a good courage. He said, well, there's nothing that we ought to fear. Why? He said, because the Lord is with us. Now, I'm not telling you to go pick up a snake. I fear a snake. I mean, he, he gives us some common sense. Yeah. And, and, and he, he <laughs> there are just some things we ought not to do. But we don't need to fear. He said, don't fear what man can do to you. What's the worst that man can do to you? The worst they can do to you would be send you on to heaven early. Paul said that's far better anyway. But what can God do for you? He said, don't fear what man can do for you, which can just kill the body. He said, but fear God, which can destroy both body and soul in hell. So we see here, what's he wanting you to do? Well, he's, he gave Joshua, it's, it's a condition here. He said, be strong and of good courage that thou mayest. He said, observe. 
What's he saying? Joshua? That doesn't mean just to see, by the way. I know we observe things, and but, but here, this word observe here means to obey, means to do. It, it, it means here, not only that, but it says uh, to keep or adhere to in practice, uh, to comply or obey. So he says, here, what you, here, Joshua, here's what I want you to do, to obey my word. You know what he wants us to do in 2023? Obey his word. Be faithful to his word. That's what he wants us to do. He said, he said, observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Now here's what he said. Joshua, here's what you're not to do. Don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. In other words, Joshua, you take my word and you obey my word exactly as it says and don't vary from it. You know, we got too many variances today. You know, people today, it surprises me, even Christians today, wants to change the Word of God. They want to, they want to add what they think, and they want to add uh, what, what the world has put in, and just, well, he didn't really mean, they, yes, he did mean sin is sin. He didn't change his mind about things like that. God is, hey, when he says it's wrong, it's still wrong in 2023. But we as some Christians today say, well, God really, really didn't mean that. No, he didn't mean that. See, we can't change God's word, but God's word can change us. See, we don't need to change his word. We need to let his word work in you and I and change you and I. Can I say if God's word changes you and I, it's definitely going to be for the better. It'll be for the better. And he said here, Joshua, uh, here, here's, here's what you're going to do. If you obey my word, now notice what he said here. He said, neither, he said, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left hand, that thou mayest prosper. He said, Joshua, if you just obey my word, if you do what I say, Joshua, he said, you're going to prosper wheresoever, whithersoever thou goest. I like that, don't you? And if you and I obey God's word in 2023, if we try, if we pay attention to what God ha has to do for uh, you and I in 2023, you know what we'll do? We'll prosper as well if we're obedient to what God says. And what's that mean? He said, well, if you look it up in Webster's, it says, just to be successful. To succeed. You know, success really is not measured in your bank accounts. Success is not measured in stuff. There's a lot of people who got a lot of stuff, but they're in head over heels in debt. You miss five minutes of work, you can't make a payment. There's a problem. It's not measured in the things that we have and, and all that. Our, our success, can I say really our success is measured in what we've sent to heaven? Those treasures, not these treasures. These treasures, you know, you, today, how many of you locked your doors before you come to church? Why did you lock your doors? Because there's somebody out there who wants to come borrow your stuff and not bring it back, right? That's why. You see, you don't have to worry. I like what I said. You know, we send our treasure to heaven. He said they were neither moth nor rust or what? Thieves. We don't have to worry about a thief in heaven. Well, there's going to be a thief in heaven, but he's no longer a thief. Why? Because God's word changed him. It's changed him. And if we want to be a success, if we want to prosper in 2023, Let's do the same thing. Let's move forward just as Joshua and the children of Israel are having to move forward. We need to move forward here at Revival Baptist Church doing what God would have us to do. Amen. I want you to notice here. Then he says, Mayest, he's, well let me read verse 7 again, that only be thou strong, and courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn, turn not from it 
to the right hand or to the left hand that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Again, so he said that he uses that word observe, that thou mayest observe. Again, to do according to all that is written therein. So he's telling Joshua here, Joshua, you know what you need to do? He said, here, here's what, Joshua, here's what I want you to do. I want you to proclaim God's word. You know what we need to do in 2023? Proclaim God's word. Who do we do it to? Well, whenever we get an opportunity to witness for the cause of Christ. Brother Tommy preached on closed doors. But you know what? There's some doors that may be closed today that you and I, we can reopen. We don't need to leave them closed. There's some doors we ought to leave closed. But some we ought to open back up. And he says, he, Joshua, here, I want you to proclaim God's word. But Joshua, not only do I want you to proclaim God's word, I want you to obey God's word. I think that's maybe one of the hardest things we have or we want to do or we would do is be obedient to God's word. You, you know why? We're, we're naturally rebellious, aren't we? If you don't believe me, how many of you raised children? I know mine was the only two that were little rebels. Everybody else had angels. That was perfectly minded to every little thing. I know Matthew done everything that Randy and Sabrina told him to do when, he, when, when they told him. That, matter of fact, they didn't have to tell him he'd done it before they told him. Is that right, Matthew? This is yes. No, why? We're rebels. We don't want to obey. But can I say, obedience pays off. It's a whole lot better than chastisement. I can tell you that. I can tell you that by experience. He said, Joshua, I want you to proclaim God's word. Joshua, I want you to obey God's word. But Joshua, here's how what, and here's a good part. Not only you got to proclaim it, not only do you want to obey it, but Joshua, here's what you need to do. You need to practice it. See, that's where we're having a problem again. So we, it's easy, sometimes it's easy to say, oh, do this and do that and don't do that. Folks, but it's hard sometimes to put it in practice. And he said, Joshua, don't turn to the left, don't turn to the right. He said, but, but, he said, but pay attention. He said, do those things that are written therein. So he said, Joshua, here, I, you've got the manual. You've got, folks, this is better than any GPS. It won't recalculate on you. It won't get you lost. It won't take you to a place that you don't really want to be in. They will. This won't. And he says, the book of the law shall not depart. Folks, what is he telling you and I here? He said, he said take the word of God. Take the word of God and hide it in your heart. I like what Brother Scott, he read this morning out of James chapter number 4, verse number 17. I like what he read. He said, therefore, to him that doeth, he said, to him that, I wrote it down, Scott, not to do good and doeth, doeth it not, to him it is what? Sin. But God, but, but God wrote down another verse. He wrote a verse to be able to help us not do James chapter number 4 verse number 17. He wrote down Psalms 119 and verse number 11. Here's what he wrote. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. What keeps us from, hey, we're washed by the water of the word. We're kept by the word. The word will keep us if we'll be obedient to the word. It's not easy. It's not, it, it's not, it, you know, some, and it's not as hard as what we make it out to be. But it's not easy. It's not hard. You just, I, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and revert to a Nike commercial. You just do it. Just do it. The Word of God. And he said, we're to meditate upon the Word. 
What's that mean? Well, folks, that doesn't mean you, you sit there and you cross your legs and you, and you light some kind of incense and you, and you make some kind of strange noise. Well, that's what I do if I try to cross my legs. I'd be in pain. That's not the meditation that he's talking about. He said, when you read the Word of God, he said, take that Word of God and think upon that Word of God. Think about what God is saying to you. What's he said? Is he giving you something? That, is he giving you a promise to hold on to? Is he giving you something that you can do? Hey, just think upon the Word of God. And he said, I'll help you in 2023. <laughs> he says, Psalms 119, he said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. Then he says that word observe again. We, we looked at that real quick. And he says to meditate therein day and night. Have you ever been woke up in the middle of the night thinking about God's word? Sometimes it can be reassuring. Sometimes it can be unsettling. But, but the word of God he said, when we, when we think on this thing, when we do this, he said, I, here's what I'll do for you. He said, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way, notice what he says here, thy way prosperous. So again, there's a condition here. We're thinking on the word of God, we're obeying the word of God, we're proclaiming the word of God, we're practicing the word of God, we're doing all these things, now he says, here's what I'll do. Then. He said, then I'll make thy way prosperous. Well, what's he talking about thy way? He said, what does he mean by the way? Is the way the, the, the direction that we're traveling? Is the way uh, just simply something that we, that we don't understand? No, he's telling you and I that the way is just how we're doing things. Brother Sammy was teaching Sunday school this morning. And I, I recall the message Brother Kenneth Payne preached not years ago, back in, way back in the 1900s. Or it might have been early 2000s. About the three M's. Our method, our manner, and our motivation. That's what he's talking about here, the way. That, that's, that's, that's what we do. That's... That, that's the manner of doing anything. The, man doing, hey, the means of doing and seeking the best way of learning. He said, here's what I'm going to do, uh, Joshua. If you do this in my word, he said, I'm going to make your way. He said, I'm going to give you wisdom. I'm gonna, you're going to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus. Folks, when we do that, when we meditate upon the word of God, when we're obedient to the word of God, he said, you're going to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I'm going to increase your way. <laughs> he said, Joshua, you know you're getting ready to go in to the promised land. You know what's there, Joshua? You're going to have enemies. There's those that's going to resist you, Joshua. But remember, I've already told you I've given you the land. Remember, Joshua, I've already told you I've prepared the way. Joshua, you've already got the victory if you just remember what I told you. Folks, you've already got the victory in 2023 if we just remember what God's already told us. Yeah. He said, he said uh, you're going to have to, here's what you're going to have to do, Joshua. You're going to go in and you're going you're to have to pursue the enemies. Boy, that doesn't sound good, does it? In other words, you're going to have to go after them. Don't wait till they come after you. Go ahead and take the initiative, move forward, and you go after the enemy and you drive them out. You know what God wants you and I to do? He wants us to pursue the enemy. With the word of God. Again, not with what we think. Not with old... But, but with the word of God. He said, here's what I want you to do. He said, Joshua, he said, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. In other words, Joshua, whatever you do, it's going to work. Have you ever tried doing something within your own self? And we'll call it, Brother Sammy, the flesh. Try to do something in the flesh and it just fall apart on you. I know nobody else has done that beside me. 
And he just, you just made a mess out of everything. And the more you tried to fix it, the more broke it got. Till it finally got to the point where it's unfixable. But I like that, but God. God can step in and he can fix the unfixable. He can reverse those things that we've messed up. But we've got to be obedient to the word of God. He said, then, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. You see, that's a promise from God. If we want to be successful and succeed, and, and this could be in the, the business world or whatever, at work or wherever it may be, you know what we need to do? Be obedient to God. And be obedient. Folks, we need to learn some obedience. I need to learn some obedience. And he said, you'll be, he said, you'll be a success. And what does that simply mean? He said, the favorable or prosperous termination of anything attempted. That's pretty good, isn't it? See, Webster said that. I didn't say that. A termination which answers the purpose intended. Now, anybody here ever get, ever, ever, have you ever asked a question and you didn't get the answer to the question that you asked? Somebody, they tried to answer it, and they went around the world, and they never got to a question. They just, gave you a bunch, they just gave you a bunch of words. He said, but here, you'll get the answer. Here. He said, you'll get the He said, I like what he says here. He says, which answers the purpose intended properly. Now, here, in a good sense. Have you ever got an answer to a question that didn't make no sense at all? You probably did if you got one from me. It made no sense. But he says here, it'll make good sense. What's the answer? It's the answer is the word of God. And if you want to make sense out of anything, it's in the word of God. He says, but sometimes in a bad sense. Sometimes even disobedient children are chastised, aren't they? But can I say, and I believe it's Brother Ray, he might have mentioned this, God never chastised out of anger. He only chastised out of love. He loves. His love is unconditional for you and I. But his blessings are, ba hey, his blessings are conditional. That's that butter thin. Folks, he wants you and I, he wants us to move forward here he wants us to be obedient to his word, stay in his word, hide his word in your heart. Then he tells us in verse number 9, don't get discouraged. Can I ask you another question? Has anybody here ever got discouraged in the last year? Has anybody here got discouraged yesterday? Has anybody been discouraged today? I'd have to raise my hand. You see, but he says, if we do these things, he said, don't let those discouragements, don't let those faults and failures, those things where we fail God, he said, don't drag them into this new year because they'll just weight us down. Verse number 9 says, Have I not commanded thee? He said, Be strong and of good courage. And be not afraid. Folks, we don't have to fear what the world thinks of you and I. I'll go ahead and tell you what they think of you. They don't think much of you anyway. Our government don't think much of you. Folks, it's a shame and a disgrace to even say this because our government was, fa was founded on, based upon the Word of God. And now it seems like it's turning away from it. I'm not anti-government. I'm not one of them. I, I'm, I'm just trying to tell you the truth. So what do we do? We stand for the word of God. He said, don't be afraid, neither be thou dismayed. That's discouragement. Folks, can I tell you something about discouragement? It is like a virus. It's worse than COVID. And here, here but you can't, you can't kill it neither. See, you can kill COVID. 
but you can't kill discouragement. You get one discouraged, pretty soon everybody's discouraged. And then when you get everybody discouraged, nobody's doing nothing. We need not to get discouraged. Folks, if it's just one or two, now I don't want to be one or two. I, I, I want us to work together. I, I don't want to have one or two. Folks, but if it's just one or two, if you're the only one working, thank God for you're the only one working. Don't get discouraged. Don't get dismayed. For the Lord thy God, now here's a promise. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Again, he says, whithersoever thou goest. So what's he telling Joshua? Joshua, there's no place you can go. There's no place that you can go that I won't be with you, Joshua. There's no place that you can go that I won't help you, Joshua. If you do what I tell you to do, Joshua, wherever you go, I'm going to be with you. Whatever you do, I'm going to help you. Whatever the outcome is, Joshua, it's going to be good. Why? Because you've been obedient to my word. You've been a help. Joshua, you're doing what I told you to do. <laughs> Wouldn't that be good to hear? And he's telling you, he's telling me tonight, that wheresoever we go in 2023, he said, I'll be with thee. He said, thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Would you stand? Heather, would you come? I know... All them closed doors. I know Brother Tom, I appreciate the burden on Brother Tommy's heart this morning. But I can tell you tonight, there's some doors that we can open. We don't need to leave them closed. But it's not going to take one or two. It's not going to take just this one or that one. It's going to take each and, and just as Brother Scott was talking about building the wall, Nehemiah, everyone, they, they was working with a sword in one hand, laying brick with the other. It took every one of them. And they built that wall, I think, Brother Scott, in 53 days. I think it was right around 53 or 63. It, it was a, um, it was a, Amazing an amount of short time how long it took them to build that wall. Why? Because they were all working and they were all in the will of God. They were all in fellowship. But they wasn't foolish enough not to work without a sword. Because the enemy, oh Sam Ballot and Tobiah, they're going to come by. They're going to try to spread those seeds of discouragement. They're going to try to get you all down. But let me say, you ought to do what? They, just ignore them. Don't pay no attention to them. We've got a lot of sand ballots and Tobias. We don't have a whole lot of Nehemiahs. We need them. We need them. And as she sings, if you'd like to come tonight, there's a, if you need to pray, would you come?